Okay, so the next things we're going to talk about is the perforant pathway and the PAPES cycle. Um, this is PAPES, not PAPES. I know that sounds way cooler, but this is PAPES. Um, these are both pathways that have to do with memory and memory recall. Um, unlike most of the pathways, this is more like the basal ganglia where I'm actually going to draw it out, and then it's more, I think if you draw it out, you become familiar with the pathway, then you can actually find the growth structure of the brain and identify it better. So... Start first with the perforant pathway, which is a little simpler. The perforant pathway is actually just everything that's happening within your hippocampus to help you form memories. So what's going to happen is that we'll actually have a, a perceived sense come in. So I am perceiving some sort of sense. I'm experiencing something, and I want to store that as a memory. So that sense is going to eventually make its way to my parahippocampal gyrus. Then, within my parahippocampal gyrus, all the magic happens. So the first area that this new input comes to is the, that's spelled wrong, the entorhinal cortex. The entorhinal cortex is then going to send projections next to my dentate gyrus of my hippocampus. Dentate meaning teeth, these are actually somewhat visible on cross-section. You can see little grooved marks. From here, we're going to travel through all of our CA sections. So if you remember, there's CAs 1, 2, 3, and 4. The traditional way to learn it is that it goes from CA3 to CA1. Um, but don't forget, there are other pathways. But CA3 to CA1 is the traditional perforant pathway. From there, then, it's going to go afterwards to the subiculum of the hippocampus. And it's just going to create a chain. What's going to happen is just over and over, it's going to fire through this pathway and create memories. So just the more times I fire, the more ingrained this memory becomes. Eventually, this information is going to travel to the cortex and be stored, and that's how you get long-term memories. So this entire section here, this that is my perforant pathway. Again, that's just how memories are created. It's kind of how the magic happens within the hippocampus. So then we're going to add on to that. So there's the PAPE cycle. So the PAPE cycle then has to do with retrieval of memory. So now that I've created these memories, I want to consciously retrieve them. So what will happen is my cortex is going to send a signal that says I want to retrieve a memory. It's going to go to my parahippocampal gyrus and activate this entire system. The entire system gets revved up, retrieves that memory, and it leaves through the subiculum. So from the subiculum, you get these long white matter projections that will loop up and travel down to the mammillary bodies. So these projections you've actually seen quite a bit of, but you don't really understand until now. This is the fornix. So remember, the fornix was this large loop of white matter traveling from the hypothalamus to the mammillary bodies. This is where they finally come into play. Specifically, the posterior commissure of the fornix is used in the PAPE cycle, but just knowing that it's the fornix in general is important. The mammillary bodies then do some crosstalk and some integration of memory, but will send afterwards send projection fibers to the thalamus. Specifically, to the anterior nucleus of the thalamus. So you need to start knowing your nuclei of the thalami, and the anterior nucleus is involved in this. These projections are called mammalothalamic tract. And this is actually a white matter tract that sometimes is seen grossly in the middle of your thalamus. So I would look for that in lab. Finally, now that we have this information in the thalamus, we want to bring it back to our cortex. So usually we bring it to our cortex, specifically the cingulate gyrus, because remember these are all limbic functions. And to get here, we travel through our old friend, the internal capsule. So the perforant pathway and the PAPE cycle. The perforant pathway, just storing memory, all happens within the parahippocampal gyrus. 
tra information ascents first travels through the entorhinal cortex, dente gyrus, CA3, 1, subiculum, and over and over until a memory is formed. If I want to retrieve that memory, then my cortex will stimulate this gyrus. It will rev up the memory, and then it will send an efferent from my subiculum through my fornix to the mammillary bodies, and then from the mammillary bodies to the anterior nucleus of the thalamus via the mammalothalamic tract, and finally from the anterior nucleus of the thalamus to the cingulate gyrus via the internal capsule. And those are the memory cycles.